good morning, my friends. We're braving the dust storm, much like those, like Merle Haggard leaving Oklahoma when he was a boy, coming out to Bakersfield, we're doing it again today. Headed to Bakersfield to see the Kern County Museum. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, we've made it. I almost feel like they're closed because there's like hardly anybody here, but I do see a gate open, so that's refreshing. The reason that I really wanted to come here is because even though they do have a Bakersfield Music Hall of Fame, it's so new that I think it probably won't have all the great stuff that I want to see, but I know for sure they have a whole exhibit on the Bakersfield sound here, as well as having the childhood home of Merle Haggard. The box car. So we're gonna take a look. Hopefully, hopefully we won't have any troubles. This place is apparently so big, there's no way we'll be able to see it all today. So we're just gonna pick a handful of things to see. I think they have like 16 acres worth of buildings. If you remember when I was in Dayton and I was at Carillon Park, they've done pretty much the same thing here where they've brought a lot of the more well-known buildings onto the property here. And so they do have a little bit of a policy that um, because of my camera, it looks so professional. They have a $75 policy for um, photography, but they're gonna waive it if I'll switch my camera. So I'm gonna go get my smaller camera out of the car and, uh, and we'll just vlog it that way, okay? Well, we've entered the inside and the first thing I'm looking at that I love already is the Merle Haggard baseball bat. Now, like I mentioned, they have a ton of stuff here, but really what I wanna show you today is the music side of Bakersfield, so let's go. Well, here we go. Bakersfield Sound Wing. Look at that. Fuzzy Owens pedal steel. Now it says Fuzzy Owens played a steel guitar on the Cousin Herb Henson's trading post as well as at many area nightclubs. Owens was nominated for Best Steel Guitar by the Academy of Country Music. Owens also managed Merle Haggard's career for decades, producing many of Merle's songs. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Merle Haggard made his name here in Bakersfield. He learned how to play guitar here. And right there's Merle Haggard. Check that out. Merle went to a Lefty Frizzell concert in Bakersfield sang a couple of songs for Lefty before the show. Brazil was so impressed he allowed Merle to sing at the concert. Now, Merle had a bit of a drinking problem when he was young, so a lot of people don't know. He was actually one of the inmates at San Quentin the day that Johnny Cash recorded the album. The day that he showed up, 1959. Pretty crazy. Now when Kevin and I came driving out here, we definitely encountered quite a bit of the Dust Bowl and that's what actually brought Merle Haggard's family out here. They lived in Oklahoma and they were just tired of that Dust Bowl so they came out here for a new life. Now this picture in the center I believe was Merle's second wife and was also, she was Buck Owen's wife before Merle married her and she became uh, one of Merle's backup singers for quite a few years. Now right here are some, uh, some awesome cowboy boots that say uh, hag on the side and Nudie made those for Merle. Of course, Nudie's rodeo tailors. Now that right there, that Merle Haggard jacket was a uh, Nathan Turk. You can tell that's not quite a Nudie. There's no flash to that one. There's a little bit of flash, but not quite enough. And this was uh, Bonnie Owens. That was Merle's second wife. That was her outfit. Like I mentioned, she was uh, she was part of Merle's act for years. Now here are a bunch of people that I've never heard of. Herb Henson. That's cousin Herb that was mentioned in that very first uh, showcase. So you can see these are all different uh, instruments that were on that show. Jimmy Phillips played this Ludwig snare. And then you can see that jacket. That was uh, Herb Henson's jacket. It says that one was made by Nudie. See, there's... A 
Dude, Nudie had his hand in all these guys' style wardrobe, right? Check that out. Now you know, you know these were gonna be made by Nudie. Look at that. These are the, from the Maddox family. I've never heard any of their music. Kevin, you ever heard the Maddox family music? Yep. You like it? Is it any good? Of course, yes. It's like card family music. I figured. Except dudes and shit. Now this case is great because you can see right there, they've got one of those classic uh, Buckaroo, Buck Owens guitars, the American classic. You can see right there, even on the head, it says the American. And the, uh, the little note here says, following his wife Bonnie, Buck Owens moved to Bakersfield in the early 50s. Bill Woods hired Owens to play with his band at the Blackboard Cafe, and he stayed for seven years. After recording songs on the Lou, to Lou Tall label, Owens signed a contract with Capitol Records in 1957. He formed his backup band, the Buckaroos. And then it says, uh, as a demonstration of Owens' patriotism, he had their guitars painted red, white, and blue. Over the years, Owens had gifted replica guitars to many of his friends, including the Kern County Museum, which is the one that's right here. And you can see right there on the pick guard, it says that. 1965. And then that Doyle Holly guitar strap right there. He used that when he was a member of the Buckaroos. Tony and Emma's boots of the Buckaroos. Pretty cool. 1975 Ovation. Nudie's Rodeo Taylor shirt there. Look at that, man. That's nice. Red Simpson is probably best known for his number one hit, I'm a Truck. This jacket <laughs> commemorates this song. It's hilarious. I love it. It's his banjo he bought for 25 bucks and a pack of smokes. <laughs> that used to be the going rate for banjos, I think. <laughs> Still is. There's one of Red Simpson's albums. There's Red Simpson and it says that uh, Sam's Place, this album right here, was co-written by Buck Owens and Red Simpson. Number one hit. So this case is for Tommy Collins, and this was a Nathan Turk, and it says uh, he was one of the first musicians to write songs using a style new and later is the Bakersfield Sound. Collins influenced many country musicians, including Buck Owens and Merle Haggard. Buck Owens played guitar for several Tommy Collins hit singles, and this jacket is a, uh, a nod to Tommy Collins' real name, Leonard and a Merle Haggard hit song about Collins. Wow, man, look at that outfit. That's pretty cool, actually. So they have multiple different little uh, exhibits that you can check out. This is like the kids area, the Discovery Center. And then, like I said, they moved a bunch of the buildings and memorable hotels and things that were in Bakersfield over to here for safekeeping. I gotta check out what these saber-toothed tigers are up to over here what their story is. Now this house right here was actually an example of the old California bungalow style. It says that originally people would build these houses until they could afford something better. It was basically a one room, one bedroom house. So in order to display these great houses and everything that they've moved here, they've set them up just like you're like in a community, almost like Mayberry. I love it. Here you can see the sign up there that says log cabin this way or the oil museum that way. The Howell House. It's got that old Queen Anne style that we love so much on this channel. Here's an adobe house and you can see the old uh, the old oven out here. This is cool, they leave a lot of the doors open so you can go in and check out the places. It says this is the Kern City French Bakery and then right over here 
is an old log cabin. I mean, old log cabin called the Barnes Log Cabin. It says this was made from trees washed down river um, from the Sierra Nevada mountains during a flood. Check this out, they got an old windmill over here. Then we're gonna check out this Southern Pacific train rail car over here. Love this kind of stuff. Kevin was just saying the same thing, he's like, man, I love these kind of museums. You kind of walk through and they have everything where you can take a peek inside the windows and see what they look like. Rustic life, baby. An old smokehouse over here. Cool. There's the jail. Let's go see if anybody got forgotten about in here. I always like to check. Some engravings in here you can see. It's our local photographer. That's awesome. Very interesting little exhibit they have here. This is a great museum. This drugstore goes back all the way to 1889. Prescriptions carefully compounded. Let's check it out. Grandpa Munster would have loved to get his hands on that wall. Look at that. What is cramp bark? Where the flowers actually have a scent. <laughs> These aren't as good as those over there though. Oh, that one was pretty good. The Joss house. Got a very, uh, very cool, very cool vibe to it. What is that? Chinese community was an early and significant element of the Kern County population. Interesting. Look at that. Well, that's what's on the inside. Oh, that's super cool. Let's walk through this gazebo and see what this house is over here. Okay, here it is, the Haggard House. Now the story was that when the family moved out here, they didn't have that much money, so Merle's dad bought an old train car, built some rooms on the inside of it, put some siding up, and the family lived there pretty much all of his childhood years. Now I first got into listening to Merle Haggard mainly through Graham Parsons. He had covered uh, Mama Tried and Sing Me Back Home and had always cited Merle as an influence and pretty much everything I ever listened to through friends like Kevin. Kevin's like one of the few people that I know that has a true appreciation for country music. So he's Real been- Real country music. Yeah, so he's turned me on to like the Osborne Brothers and you know, all that stuff for years. So we're gonna come up here and actually get a look inside. Now, Merle is not actually buried in Bakersfield. I believe he's buried up north. Um, he 
basically went bankrupt at one point in his career, lost everything, and then had a resurgence in his career at the end and bought a big ranch. And when he died, he requested to be buried on the ranch. So can't see his, uh, his grave or anything, but this says in 1935, James and Flossie Haggard bought this Santa Fe Railroad refrigerator car located on property at 1303 Yosemite Drive for $500 after modifying the former railroad car and constructing two additions James and Flossie moved into their new home in Oildale with their two children Lillian and Lowell. This converted railroad car was supposed to be a temporary living situation while they built a larger permanent home. However, their son Merle was born April 6, 1937. The family's plan to build a larger home changed. Merle Haggard would grow up to become one of country music's most famous singers and songwriters with 40 songs that reached number one on the music charts. He helped to define a style of music known as the Bakersfield Sound and has had a lasting influence on American music. Bakersfield loves him so much, they just recently dedicated a post office to him, and he has his own parkway out here. So let's go on in. Old 1303. It's my grandparents' place. This would have been the sitting room. Man, didn't this, I mean, dude, didn't this feel surreal to be inside? Mm -hmm. Somebody who wrote so many amazing songs that have lived on for 50, 60 years and to see the bedrooms and the rooms they would have walked every single day. I mean, he would have, he would have got his first guitar and would have learned how to play it in this house. I don't know, man, that's pretty rad. <laughs> that, that, that kind of stuff just makes my mind just, just look at that, I mean, gosh. Been washing his own dishes at that sink probably. His mom would have been cooking the meals right there. Man, dude, that is great. We'll take you around back. We'll show you guys the uh, pretty small place though. So if you can imagine this this walkway not being here, this would have been the whole sitting sitting entertainment area right here, the front of the house. Now let's go take a look at the back. No, nothing too special, but you gotta love that Bakersfield did something like this, you know? Yeah, awesome. Moved moved all these like classic historic homes. Whether the families were famous or not, even if it was just, you know, they they donated the house and it had a particular style that told a story. Look at this. You can see where he's had to do a repair here, replace a plank. Look at that! Oh look at that! The stenciled numbers on there. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You would think with Merle Haggard being uh, living in here, he would have been known as Boxcar Merle, not Boxcar Willie, <laughs> you know? Look, there's one of the additions onto the house. That would have been, uh, that would obviously been a bedroom. Let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, that's the extra room because that is the kitchen we're looking at right in here. Pretty small little place, huh? And there's more of that. I was showing you guys this on the other side. There was like one little plank that was different here. The whole uh, back addition of the house was looked like recycled wood. And I love how they put it right here in front of this train that we were out a little bit ago, right in front of the Benna station. This says it's the 1898 steam locomotive. Served the San Joaquin Division of the Southern Pacific Company from 1900 to 1955. Here's one of the old Santa Fe caboose. Oh, cool. That's got to be old farm equipment. What do you think, Kevin? Or is yeah, this train plow, stuff? Dude. That's an old plow? Yeah. See, that's why you bring friends from Indiana when you go to a place that is known for its farming culture and oil culture. Tractor drawn 
County? What? Road, dirt, and gravel? Yeah, like the gravel for gravel roads and this thing, they gathered it up in this thing, dumped it into there, and then spread it evenly with this. Fantastic. Who's your baby? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the Fairhaven Pump House. That one right there is actually right here. I'm kind of curious to see what's in the old pump house, aren't you? A pump. <laughs> Look at this old church. You can see the uh, stained glass window up there. Hey, I'm telling you, this is a fun little museum. This is a fun stop. This is not your average museum that you just find everywhere. I mean, I love this kind of stuff. Totally different way of looking at history. Oh, and there we go. They've got the, uh, the front door open so we don't have to look through the window anymore. Pretty small, but perfect. I can imagine a movie being filmed in this little, little church. So that's what we were just in, the St. John's Episcopal Mission. We gotta come over here and take a look at all this. They've got a really cool barn right here I'd like to check out. And then this looks like a, uh, place where they would put the horseshoes on and we gotta check out that caboose and then that tiny little county hospital down there oh yeah that's all equipment yeah that's all farm equipment was that old John Deere sure is Wonder if they gave a free hat when you bought them back then, too. Let's go check out the building next door. Their little banner up here says, Take a walk through Kern County history. That's exactly what they've got going here. I love it. Now let's go in and check out the horseshoeing. A little dark in there, right? Wow, kind of see what life would have been like living in the back of one of these. There you can even see the dinner bell out front, dinner triangle. The undertaker parlor. This ought to be exciting. Oh! That definitely would have been it, right? I've never quite seen a casket like that before. Like a wicker casket. And they would just put like a divider up when they were doing the autopsy. So it says that this was basically like a social gathering club, a fraternal hall for some of the oil workers to entertain themselves. Let's go on in and take a look. Well, yeah, it looks like an Elks Club immediately when you walk in, right? Probably because it is. <laughs> There's a book here that says, is the Catholic Church a menace to democracy? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're uh, you sometimes forget like the Elks and stuff like that are kind of a religious organization. Well, Knights of Columbus are definitely a Catholic. Oh yeah, that's what this is. 
Knights of Columbus. Organized March 5th, 1905. Some yeah. of the podiums. Even has an upstairs. Bear, bear skin in there. Well, there's the clink. Kern County Courthouse and the lower ground is the jail. Wow, never seen a jail quite like that. Not with these kind of bars. Good luck Otis getting himself out of this one, you know what I mean? Kevin pointed out a good point, yeah. and, and I had said it before, there's no way you could have got the keys off that wall with a rope or a shoelace say, or anything keys like that. Are hanging right here, right? There is no way, this is too small of an area. You can't put your wrist, there's no torque. I don't care how many belts you have, Mrs. Brady, you're not getting those keys off of that wall and then dragging it across this rough floor. Take a look at this. This is the first county hospital in Bakersfield. Opened its doors in January of 1875. Oh, cool. That button just made all these oil pumps start. Now let's take a look at some of the neon signs. There's the Far East sign. Fried shrimp and chop suey. Kevin and I were laughing at this one. Jim Baker electrifier. And it looks like this building was Stinston Stationers. And then you've got the sign for the Silver Fox up here, which is pretty cool. It's a great little logo. And then they have this amazing old 76 station. I feel like Navin Johnson should be working here or something right now, you know? <laughs> This was the Sonora Street Service Station. Built in 1936 in the corner of Sonora and East 18th Street. Never heard of that place. I just noticed they have a little uh, stairwell over here, so we're gonna wander into there and see what this is all about. I feel like I'm walking into a fun house here. Whole thing looks like it's gonna fall over if a termite sneezes. Dude, I think I actually started up an oil business over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the button that we push to get those well, Derek, things to start moving. Wow, this is pretty cool to be able to walk around this. I dig this. Look at that. This is definitely not your average Days with Jordan the Lion vlog. But I don't know if there is an average. <laughs> if there is a set standard for what we do here. The walking beam. So you walked across that one? Let's go down here and see what's down here. Sand reel. Look at 
Look at that belt. So that's what the inside of one of those looks like. Here we're at the Hotel Fellows here. That's opening day in 1911. It says the discovery of oil on the west side of Kern County in the late 1800s brought an influx of people to the area and created oil boom towns such as Fellows, Reward, and Taft. So that's why they were opening up hotels, of course. This influx of new visitors. Here we go. Because yeah, this one though you can tell. You can't, the can't see anything from the other side, but in here you can kind of see the way it's laid out. So I'm just gonna say, we were both coming here mainly for pretty much the music stuff to see Merle Haggard's house, but I think this place really blew both of us away compared to what we were expecting. I, this is one of the coolest museums I've been to in all of California. There's the old Kern Valley Bank. Capital, 50,000. Let's take a look in this old bank before we get out of here. Got a stack of bills on there. Oh, that's cool. Look through the bars and you can see the, uh, the adding machines and all that stuff in there. And there's a picture of George Washington. You got your bank vault right in there. A little adding machine. Picture of, is that McKinley up there? Here's the general store and I wanted to come by here because I saw they had a one of those original painted style barber poles. I've never seen a barber pole actually painted like that, so. Heck of a deal for a bath, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Still has a lot of the names on there. The last drop from his Stetson. So this would have been the uh, you know, the equivalent of the Drucker, the Drucker store from Green Acres is how I kind of equivalent it. Has that same feel. A little candy, candy section over there. I think we've pretty much seen as much as we're gonna see today. There is more to see, but like I said, this place was so awesome, we were both sitting here going, we, we gotta come back here again sometime because it's pretty cool to be able to walk around an old timey town and there's just nobody here but us. There's like, you could just come and hang out by yourself and go back into the time machine. So, we're gonna head out, go over to Buck Owens Crystal Palace now. This thing is great. All the detail in that. We came over here because I said, I wonder if there's a way to, they have a little stairwell or anything that you're allowed to go up in there. Maybe not. Oh, they do, but it's locked, it looks like. Drats! All right, Kern County, good job on your museum. We're gonna go get a bite to eat now. No, no, thank you, thank you. When we were inside looking at some of the Merle Haggard memorabilia, I mentioned that he at one point was in San Quentin, and I didn't tell you why. This is why he actually quit drinking for a long time, was because he became such an alcoholic around here that he got arrested for trying to burglarize a bar while it was still open. Oh yeah, once again, like I've always said, you can't come to Bakersfield and just feel like you're getting the true experience without coming to Buck Owens Crystal Palace, and the whole reason we were coming, like I told you, was was Kevin's birthday last week. He's Jaw's birthday brother, and he's never got to come here, and he's always wanted to come to the Crystal Palace, so there it hey, is. I'm very excited. I was just telling Kevin how happy I am that Last time we were here, they had a like a car parked right here, like a giveaway that you could win, and it was covering up Buck Star, like commemorating the place opening. So they finally got it looking respectable again.
Well, as we were leaving the Crystal Palace, I looked in the gift shop and they had some Buck Owens picks, so I picked up a few. I want to thank Jeff Kincannon for becoming my newest Patreon and hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. That museum was fantastic. Thank you so much, Kern County. You guys did it right. Thank you for watching, Lionhearts. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and goodbye.